match forbidden. Put it out. You still, Grandpa. How can I put it out before I light it? Well, you can blow yourself up if you want to. Hey, listen. That guy's so lucky a stick of dynamite could explode in his hands and only give him a manicure. Sure, nothing hurts Lucky. His idea of a good time is to light a cigarette off a gun cock. What are you men doing around here anyhow at this hour? Trying to burgle the joint? Uh, we ain't been promoted. We're still on a graveyard ship. Uh, you're a half an hour too soon, you know that. You don't leave the mixing towers till 4 o'clock. You mean it ain't 4 o'clock yet? No. Half past 3. You're full of nitroglycerin. Go ahead, Bob. Tell him what time it is. He's right. I forgot I had to take a clean. You didn't have a set right? I couldn't. The jeweler, when he got it all put together again, discovered it was 30 minutes past. It spoils a good watch like this to set it back. So I had a jeweler fix it so it'll gain five minutes a day. In six days, it'll be all right. Yeah, for the next six days, we'll be all wrong. Hey, that's the trouble with using a watch. Now, me, I like a bugle. I remember when I was in the army in the Philippines. We yeah, we heard to... all about it. Yeah, a billion and one times. What are we going to do for the next half an hour? Anybody around? You know there's nobody around the plant at this time. Nobody much. Davenport and Wallace, the chemist rover, trying out some blasting soup on proving ground B. Oh, that's the fun that I mix, Jesse, but there's no me in it. Let's go on over. Them mugs think the sound of a paper bag busting is an explosion. <laughs> God, uh, that long <laughs> hot. <laughs> What are you doing here? Listening for the crack of dawn. Who mixed this formula that we got here? I did. How do you like it? Uh, There's not enough me in it. Parts of nitroglycerine, nitrocellulose, and potassium nitrate are all right. So it'll go heavier on the chalk. Yeah, you'd have a dynamite act like coitite. What do you care how it acts as long as it works? Pretty foggy night for an airplane to be up. Yeah, pretty foggy night for anybody to be up. How you coming, Pat? Already. Sounds like a transport. You all fit? Okay. Let her go. Hey, look, Jimmy. That pilot's flying blind. Gee, can you imagine how those fellas take their life in their hands? Are you hurt, Pat? No. Just a few scratches. How do you like my formula now, huh? Not enough me in it. There's enough me in it to pull us all over. Yeah, and if you use the same amount of my soup, Bob be saying hello to a geisha girl in China right now. Hey, it's half past. That means it's uh, 4 o'clock. Come on. The three craziest mixers in the business. Someday they'll blow themselves up. Yeah, and when they do, I suppose they'll blow up half the city with them. I got another one of those crummy formulas. Say, how do these chemists get away with junk like this? Why don't you stop belly aching? Say, I never told you fellas, but I got a formula that makes TNT sound like a cap pistol. Where you got it? In the back of my head? It's a great place for it. Keep it there. Yeah, Bob's right. You ain't had no practical experience like I have. Oh, well, I was in the... Well, you was in the Philippines, sure. Now, well, why don't you shut up and learn something? Anything you can teach me ain't done you no good. Is uh, that so? Hey, Bob, what time have you got? Well, look at the old ticker. It's, uh, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock, one more hour. Why, you going somewhere? No, only Helen's going to be waiting at the bungalow when we get back, and we're going to take her canoeing. Hey, you ain't taking a proposing that gal, are you? Why not? She's a grand gal. Sure. She'll make the 11th grand gal we had to keep her from getting splashed with this year. Hey, what do you two fellas got against marriage, anyway? Oh, when I was in the Philippines... The only thing to do with a dame is pet her and forget her. Wait, look. Look at that sour-faced old wreck she made out of him. Who's a sour-faced old wreck? Say, Jimmy, how'd you come to get spliced anyway? Oh, I didn't come to get spliced. I come to the Philippines to fight. And I met a gal named Pepita. Yeah, you see? That's the way it always starts. That was before I knew Spanish. But she tried to learn me. She taught me to say I love you, and I do. And I guess I could say them perfectly. Then one day she introduced me to a friend of hers, a guy with whiskers. And he gargled a lot of Spanish at her, and she kept saying, I do, I do. And then she turned to me and she said, sure, Ma, you can talk Spanish. <laughs> so when that clock threw a lot of questions at me in Spanish, 
I just I do them, I do them right and left. Well, finally complimented me on my Spanish. <laughs> and for Peter, she gave him two dollars, and then and the next day I found out he was a justice of the peace. And we were married. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to like Bob. Hello, Ellen. Hello, Lucky. I believe you've met Bob. Oh, yes. Sure. Uh, this is my friend Cecilia. I thought she might like to go canoeing with us. How are you, Cecilia? Swear. I beg your pardon? Cecilia stutters a little on one side, but I'm sure you won't mind that. Hey, with a face and chassis like that, she can stutter on both sides, and I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> the boathouse doesn't open for an hour or so. Let's sit around and talk for a while, huh? All right. Have a seat, Cecilia. Hey, do you always stutter? Oh, when I talk. Only when you talk. I see. <laughs> Where's your friend, Jimmy? He's out in the kitchen, cooking up something. Worker, isn't you? <laughs> yes, I love canoeing. Oh, kick uh, boating. Uh -huh. You like that. <laughs> the superintendent considers Bob and me the best men he's got. We're bound to go up. <laughs> That's just it. You'll go up someday and you won't come down. Don't be silly. There's no danger if you know your stuff. I was engaged to a mixer once. And on the day we were to be married, they couldn't find enough of him for our funeral, let alone a wedding. That's cheerful. <laughs> Could you? Sure. See, I cured dozens of girls of stuttering. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it out, will you? I got me doing it. But how do you do it? Well, in the first place, I get your mind on other things. Of course, you'll have to see me every evening for a couple of months. Is that all right with you? Yes. Okay, baby, you get your first lesson right now. No, 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 R -r 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 relax. <laughs> and as far as my job is concerned, there's no danger whatsoever. Jimmy got too much powder in his cooking. Don't be ridiculous. Baking powder couldn't make a noise like that. Oh. What's the matter? Don't you notice anything different? Sure, we were sitting down, now we're standing up. No, Jerry, oh. you're not stuttering anymore. Huh? The doctor always said a sudden bite might cure me. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, sure. Wait a minute, honey. Listen. To what? Another eruption? Oh, Helen, I'm cured. I'm cured. You're cured? Uh -huh. Let's get out of here before you're killed. Hey, man. I just found out that nitrocellulose won't work in my formula. He just found out that nitrocellulose won't work in his formula. Yeah, and now stuttering won't work in my formula. Sulfur and saltpeter without wetness. Ah. 
I was dating you guys. Suppose I did cut you out with a couple of skirts. You ought to be thanking me for doing it. Oh, I got it! I got it! Holy mackerel! Holy stuff! Out of combustion! Jimmy, come on! No, no, I'm gonna stick here and see what happens. Well, it looks like the end of poor Jimmy. Yep. Not to mention my watch. Bob, is there anything we can do? Lucky. Look. My vest. Wait a minute. You do it. You're lucky. Never miss a beat. Ha ah, ha. What a watch. I wish we could find old Jimmy as safe and sound as that watch. Yeah, we're sure gonna miss the old coot. He sure had his heart set on that formula of his. I wish he could have perfected it before he croaked. Never mind. Where Jimmy's going, he'll give him a new formula for fire and brimstone. Yeah, and I'll put some me in it, too. Jimmy! <laughs> Why, you old... We thought you were blowing up. No, the chute was stuck, so I beat it out the door and swung up here till she blew. Are you hurt? Nah, nah, a little blast like that ain't nothing. Now, when I was in the in Philippines, Philippines, we, we know. know. Are you all right? No, I ain't. There's still something wrong with that formula. When it blows like that, there's something wrong. I'll say there's something wrong. When a guy with a rubber brain like you can blow three guys out of a job, hey, you know Fenton's gonna have us on the carpet, don't you? Yeah, must have been the salt beater. Fortunately, they were all mixed with the other towers, and there might have been a tragic loss of life. Your own escape was miraculous. But one of you men is responsible for that detonation in Tower 4, and I want to know who did it. I, I did. did. Very well. I suppose such loyalty is commendable. I trust the firm will benefit by it. But in the future, you'll work in the Cordite Department. Yes, sir. We're planning to reopen our San Rico plant. And I must build a crew that I can rely upon. You mean you're going to send us to San Rico? Possibly, possibly. Oh, gee, that'd be great. Yes, it'll be just dandy. If the farthest place from here, I can transfer you. And now, until further notice, you report to Miller in the Cordite Department. Yes, yes sir. sir. By the way, we need some passport information from you men. You know Miss Leslie in the personnel department? No, no sir. I may, I know lots of them. No matter. She'll tell you what she wants. That's all, men. Yes, sir. Nice, I calls it nice. Instead of getting canned, we get better hours in the Cordite Department and a chance to see the oil. <laughs> hey, what state is San Rico in? It isn't in the state, it's in the country. Oh, that's it. Well, I remember when I was... Stop him, Bob. He's going back to the Philippines on it. <laughs> Go on, let's get personal with the personnel department. Miss Leslie? What can I do for you, gentlemen? You'd be amazed. Mr. Fenton said... But we came to be passported. Oh, yes. It's about those San Rico passports, isn't it? What's your name? Uh, Jimmy. Well, I, I mean your full name. Oh, uh, Jimmy uh, Pearson. Yeah, Jimmy short for Ed. Where were you born? Uh, In the Philippine Islands. Oh, now, wait a minute, would you? Don't you think Mr. Pearson's capable of answering his own questions? No, I don't. Where were you born? I was, um... Uh, I was 
I forget the name of the place now. You see, he was very young when it happened. Yeah. You just put down he was born an orphan and let it go at that. Married or single? Both. Yeah, he was married, but he ain't working at it now. All right, married. How old are you? 67. Oh, I am not. Is there any reason why you should answer Mr. Pearson's question? Oh, sure, we're his guardians. Who, may I ask, appointed you? The Lunacy Commission. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your name? Robert Owen. How old are you, Mr. Owen? Thirty and seven eighths. And it's Bob to you, Peaches. What powder experience have you had? Face or gun? Answer the question, please. Both. But I'm still weak and willing. William Davis, 25, Chicago, unmarried, five years as a powder mixer, Weldon and Duplex Powder Company. Thank you, Mr. Davis. That was very helpful. That's all, gentlemen. Well, uh, now can we ask you a few questions? Certainly. Always ready to supply information. What day is it? Why, it's Tuesday. Right. And what do you do Tuesday nights? Just what I do every night. And what's that? Stay home and think up answers to impertinent questions. <laughs> <laughs> you should have stayed in the Philippines. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Davis. Hello, I was just going inside to see you. Can't we discuss it out here? Well, I think, uh, I was wondering if, uh... Well, couldn't we talk about it inside? And I'm really quite busy. Well, you see, I'm afraid you might not, uh... You might refuse me. I can't very well refuse until I know what it is. Well, uh... Down? Well, I was just about to ask down? you... Yes! What I was going to ask you is... I'm busy tonight, and every night this week. Isn't that the answer to your question? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Somebody's hijacked my elevator. But I'm not doing a thing Sunday afternoon. You're not? How about going canoeing? Where are you going to call for me? Gee, I forgot all about that. Well, I was thinking, perhaps, if you'd take me home now, you wouldn't have any trouble on Sunday. Will I? Say, what right have you got to run the elevator without a light? like an expert. You should have seen my dad handle a paddle. <laughs> you come canoeing here very often? No. This is the first time. Would you like to come here again? Mm -hmm. I'd love it. If I were asked. Well, you're asked right now. You see so much of me, won't your friends be lonesome? I understand that the three of you are very devoted. No, they have their own amusement. Socks good for an hour to clean a pipe. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I wish we could go out someplace. Well, we could if we hadn't told Lucky he'd take the car to go mall buzzing. And we were saps enough to tell him he could have it next Sunday, too. We ought to be in the funny papers. That was a great idea, Mary. To have a picnic instead of going canoeing again. I knew you'd like it. 
Gee, everything sure looks good. I bet you're a swell cook. Tell me something, will you? Sure, if I can. Why do they call you Lucky? Oh, I don't know. Bob, Jim, and I used to play a lot of cards with the boys, and I generally won. I see. Lucky at cards. Unlucky in love. I hope not. Don't you miss the cards with Jimmy and Bob? Maybe they miss you. No. They have lots of things to do. <laughs> Thing you know, to be spinning a top. Oh, grow up, will you? Ever since Lucky's been going on with that Leslie gal, you've had a grouch on your four feet thick. Why not? Lucky's too nice a guy to get serious dame trouble. Yeah, what did we do about it? Plenty, maybe. Now, what time's it getting to be? Hey, where's my watch? Well, you see, it looks so nice in Lucky's new suit that I lent it to him this morning. Oh, you lent it to Lucky. You lent Lucky my watch in our car. I ought to slap your ears sideways. You <laughs> wanted to me you weren't married long ago. Just that I haven't found the man that I want to marry. You know, marriage is a funny thing. Funny? Well, maybe I mean odd. You see, a fellow and a girl are a lot like nitrate and glycerin. You keep them by themselves and they won't cause much trouble. But mix them? Yes. Well, then you have nitroglycerin. And you have to begin to watch your gauges. Well, why? Well, if you mix in too much, whether it's men and women or nitrate and glycerin, you get a blow off. And then you have to take the safety chute in the dugout. <laughs> Is there a safety chute in the dugout for marriage? Well, there's divorce. Do you believe in divorce? Where there's real love, you don't have to worry about it. That was nicely said, Lucky. <laughs> Don't put any me in these cartridges anymore. Now, when I was in the, in the Philippines, Philippines, we know. Now, what I was trying to say. Say, did you fellas see this? See what? Lorenz Idler, the famous theatrical producer who has just returned from an extensive yachting cruise to South and Central American countries, says that the ladies of San Rico are by far the most beautiful of any he has ever seen. Nice, I calls it nice. And we're headed for San Rico soon. Now, but wait a minute, they don't speak English down there, do they? No, Spanish. Well, how can I make love to a dame when we don't speak the same lingo? <laughs> I learned to speak Spanish. In the Philippines, I know. What I was trying to say was, I learned to speak Spanish in five years. Yeah, then I ought to speak hot Spanish in five days. But as you see, I can interpret for you. Ha! <laughs> can you imagine me trying to romance a dame through a face like that? Listen. There's only one thing I want to know how to say. My technique will take care of the rest of it. What's that? I love you, baby. I'm crazy for you, but I don't believe in marriage. How do you say that? Le amo que a usted casarse conmigo. Come again? Le amo que a usted casarse conmigo. Le amo que a usted 
A sarsi comigo. How am I doing? <laughs> Great. That's all I want to know. Gents, I am all set for San Rico. La amo. Quiere usted casarse conmigo. Say, <laughs> if he spouts that to a girl in San Rico, he sure will be fixed. Why? What does it mean? <laughs> it means, I love you. Will you marry me? Te <laughs> amo. Quiere usted casarse conmigo. Now, watch this. It's another heavy date. And how, fella? What do you think of this? How many times I gotta tell you about names? Don't give, take. Yeah, well, I'm giving. The next thing I give is a ring. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. You mean to say you're gonna ask that dame to marry you? You guessed it. I thought only Jimmy was that stupid. Yeah, I only got married behind my back. What's marriage gonna get you anyway? You put a ring around a dame's finger and she puts a ring around your neck. Well, you gotta give up all the things that us guys get a kick out of. Sure, it should even make you give up powder mixing. Yeah, you can't go out at night, you can't go on a bat when you want to, or you can't even go to San Rico. Yeah, but look at what I get. Sure. A powder boss standing over you 24 hours a day, one hand on your freedom and the other in your pocket. And when you get through with your shift, what do you got to look forward to? Eight hours on a nursing bottle game. And just look at that. Look what marriage did to him. That wasn't marriage, that was the Philippines. And the gal named Pepita. I hope you both get married. How many times have I told you that that girl chased me from the Philippines to Cuba? Yeah, you're nothing but a fugitive from a wedding ring. Sorry, fellas, but you're both wrong. What you should do is take a wife. Yeah? Who's, for instance? <laughs> You know, Jimmy, we gotta do something to make that dummy not make a mess out of his life. Mm -hmm. Marriage is just like suicide, only you've got somebody to help you do it. Well, you leave it to me. I'll think of something if it's the last thing I ever do. Uh -oh. That almost was. You don't think he really means it, do you? Well, you can't tell. <laughs> Look what love did to me. Well, listen, brother. Here's once we pin a hot one on love. Yeah, get busy. You got work to do. How many S's in Mississippi? M-I-S-S-I-S-I-S-S-I, I'll make it Texas. How many uh, X's in Texas? All right, all right, make it Ohio. Can you spell Ohio? Get bad news? No, just a letter from my sister. Well, come on, let's cram. Yeah, you never did a day's work in your life. Mm -hmm. Hey, how about how about going down to see the show at the Rialto tonight? Okay, let's all go. 
That is, if Lucky ain't engaged. Listen, I'm not engaged and I'm not getting married. From now on, I don't want to hear a word about it from either of you. Do you get me? Okay. Why not? Just a minute, man. Anybody here speak Spanish? Yes, sir, I speak Spanish. Do you speak it fluently? Uh, no, I talk it good. When did you learn it? Well, when I was in the... In the Philippines. Oh, Mr. Fenton, I not only speak Spanish, I live Spanish. I've eaten Spanish and I married Spanish. Well, all right, Pearson. We're ready to reopen the San Rico plant. I assign you to pick a mixing crew of 50, but they must be top men and ready to sail within a week. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, you're ready for further duties here until then. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Te amo. Quiero usted casarse conmigo. I see you're planning on quite a stay in San Rico. Huh? When do you think we'll go? Eh, it's going to be tough to find 50 good mixers. All of you boys that want to go to San Rico, raise your hand. Me. Me. Which hand? Next thing you'll have a saying is, teacher, may I leave the room? <laughs> uh, you, uh, Smith. Okay. Landers. Albright. All right. Peckham. Right. Silverstein. Fields. He'll be the first six. Gosh. It's gonna be tough to find 44 good mixers. I mean, 42. No sense to find 44 good men. Hey, listen, you big walrus, you trying to high hat us? Well, don't bother me, I'm thinking. What with? What do you know about that mug? He really means it. Why, that big swell head, he ought to have his head soaked. He's gonna get his head soaked. Ah, oh, listen, Jimmy, we are only kidding. Well, I don't like that kind of kidding. Oh, well, come on, cool off, cool off. Uh, do you realize who I am? Sure I know who you are. You're the biggest egghead I ever saw. Hey, listen, you're all wet. I'm all wet. wet. Yeah, you're all wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I wonder where I can get 44 good mixes. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. How would you like to be a sort of uh, a liaison officer between me and the San Rico plant? Not now, of course, but a bit later when we really get going. Well, Mr. Fenton, I, I don't know what to say. Well, I do hope that you can accept. It's imperative that I have someone there in whom I have implicit faith. Surely Mr. Dawson, who, who's going to be the resident manager... Oh, yes, yes, but uh, Mr. Dawson is going to be a very busy man. Now, I'd like to have you take personal charge of the bookkeeping and report direct to me. Now, the expenses and all that sort of thing would be arranged for. You'd find it most enjoyable there. I think I'd like it. Very much. Hey, do you realize that boat's sailing in a couple of days and that lunkhead ain't saying a word to us about it? Yeah, I understand he's got practically his whole crew. Yeah, well, if he gets to San Rico without me, he'll be speaking Spanish through bandages. All right, Jimmy, have a cigarette? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's it, Jimmy, you're working too hard. Here, have a chair, huh? Yeah, have two chairs, Jimmy. I'm very busy. <clears throat> I'm sorry, gentlemen, but... Mr. Fenton has a conference with me. I'll uh, finish packing when I return. <clears throat> if there are any telephone calls, just tell them that I'm in conference. And get the number. And to think I offered that big ward a seat. Yeah, me too. But I died before I let him know it bothered me. Well, I got a date with that blonde down at the drugstore. Want to come along and play games with her partner, the brunette? No dice. I'm through with women. Sure, I know. So am I. Come on. Hello, oh, Bushy. Hello. Hi, Jerry. Speak my pal, Lucky Davis. How do you do? I'm doing all right. I thought you'd be in South America by this time. 
Sure we would have been, only our pal let us down. Yeah. We thought he had a soul, but he turned out to be a heel. Oh. Right. Well, how's about it, kid? Oh, I'd love to go, but we can't. Eh, yeah, why not? What's the matter? Well, you know Bob Pills and Powders won't let us go. Uh, uh, what kind of a Sunday did you say you'd have? Eh, there no Sunday. Huh? Oh. I'll take vanilla. And you too? Yeah, same thing. Wait a minute, Toots. I got it. It's in the bag. Is there a druggist in the house? I am a pharmacist, if you know what I mean. Could you mix me a prescription? Certainly. Where is it? Right near old noggin. <laughs> What's the good of that to me? Well, you get back there with your bottles and corks. I'll give you the instructions. You know, there's very few druggists capable of mixing this formula. Hmm. Sir, I am capable of mixing any prescription you are capable of giving me. That's great. This way, please. Sure. Well, I'm ready, sir. Two ounces of powdered charcoal. Two ounces of powdered charcoal. Right. Three ounces of powdered sulfur. Three ounces of sulfur. Get on your things and be ready to scram. A dram and a half of nitre. Dram and a half of nitre. I hope you're not going to eat this, if you know what I mean. No. I'm going to inhale it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, two ounces and a half of saltpeter. Two ounces and a half of saltpeter. Seems to me I've heard of this prescription somewhere before. Yeah, it's good for taking a rust off pianos. <laughs> now get a bottle of acetone. How much acetone? Well, put in ten drops. Oh, and let me time it for you. Are you ready? Yeah. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Who is our Just a minute. Something tells me that we'd better wait here. Eight. Nine. Ten. <laughs> it's okay, babes. You can have the night off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get going. Senoritas and caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, La Rosita, with the queen of the dance, will now be like you. Just speak Spanish. If I could just tell her what I'm thinking. Yeah, you get us all thrown out of this joint. Another drink, senor? Sure, why not? Now listen, I'll give you 20 pesos if you can get that hot tamale over here. Si, sí, senor. See it all, Ancelotti, you knocked me right on my tamale. Tell her she's knocked me for a loop. Why don't you make your speech? 
Now, give me a build-up place so she'll fall for me even when I tell her I don't believe in marriage. Uh, and the DC case, the more enamorado do you stay? Oh! Boy, she says you're driving her crazy. Oh, boy, this ain't even gonna be a struggle. <laughs> Uh, El Caballero was a millionaire of the Americas. He invented the automobiles, the lunches, and the Palacio. I thought he were a big shot and owned half of the United States. When I look at her, I feel like I do. Well, here's what I give her a watch. <coughs> Te amo. She understood. Sarsi conmigo. Viva! Claro. Oh, che bellissima ballerina, eh? Oh, 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 what a Spaniard you turned out to be. <laughs> You'll find out. Hey, open another bottle of wine, huh? Oh, sure. Oh, no, 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 Sarsi conmigo. Claro que sí. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand you have a formula that has a much higher explosive capacity than anything we have been using. Well, I haven't done much with it yet, sir. It's more or less in the experimental stage. That's what I want to talk to you about. From now on, I want you to concentrate on the formula and report directly to me. It's very nice, Mr. Dawson. If I find that you really have something, I'll move you into the chemistry department immediately. And, uh, Davis, keep this under your hat. Yes, sir. Come along, I'll make the necessary arrangements. Okay. All right, Catherine. You can tell the girls to begin taking off the monthly trial balance. Oh, Miss Leslie, I'm assigning Mr. Davis to some personal work. He is to report directly to me. As he will want to use the laboratory, will you kindly make out an order to the head chemist to that effect? Yes, Mr. Dawson. Thank you. Good luck, my boy. Thank you, sir. Sit down, Mr. Davis. Thanks. Just a moment. This is the first opportunity I've had to return this. Oh, is that the way you feel about it? Well, here's your handkerchief. Oh, very well, then. I believe you gave me this, too. Oh, all right. You can have your tie back. Here, take your old compact. Well, here, here's your cigarette lighter. It's no good. It never did work. Pearson and Owens. They went out to test a formula. What right have they to go out and test formulas? I don't know. It's something Lucky Davis has been working on. Oh, I see. Uh, tomorrow is the national holiday of San Rico. Consequently, Mr. Dawson has decided to give you the day off. If you see the other three men, give them the message. All right, right Chief. Well, we get a day off. Oh, there. <laughs> Fun with that? Why not? Well, if it blows it up, I'll eat it. Now, if you had that formula of mine... Oh, by the way, did you tell Dawson about my formula? Yeah, and he said he couldn't use it. Why not? He said he heard about it, and I was too much meh. Just for that, if there's a revolution, I'm going to sell it to the Emina. Hello, Bob. What's the matter, Bob? Listen, Philippines, are you sure them Spanish words mean what you told me? Sure. 
story. Well, it's been like this every night for a week now. I take Rosita out. I tell her in Spanish that I love her, but I don't believe in getting hitched up, see? She throws her arms around me, but just as soon as I start making a pass at her, she starts biting and scratching and kicking. Well, that's the way these girls down here show their affection. Oh, is that it? Well, she better cut down some of that affection or she'd be making love to a guy in a plastic cast. You know what the trouble is? You don't take me along as interpreter. Well, maybe there's something in that. How about going along with me tonight? Mm. All right. I'll do that. Sure, I got a table all reserved. Hey, how about you, Lucky? I'm through with dames. Listen, Lucky, you can never be through with dames. Every time I look into Rosita's eyes, it does something to me. It gives me that clump, clump right here. It makes me feel that certain thing, that certain, I can't think of the word, combustion. That's the word I mean, combustion. Well, I'll be, I wouldn't believe it, boy. Why, this will revolutionize the explosive business. Lucky you're a millionaire. Boy, it's got more me in it than I ever saw. You put a ton of that off at the North Pole, the rainy icebergs in Africa. <laughs> I think we ought to celebrate. Sure, why not? It's closing time. Your formula deserves champagne. Come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> I don't understand. Why don't everybody's horning in on our celebration? Now, I just had a tremendous idea. What's that? Let's have a drink. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Big celebration, no? What do you mean, no? What do you mean, yes? What do you mean, yes or no? Ah, but the more of the day. Ah, uh, you're screwy. Tonight's tonight. You know what day is it tomorrow? Sure. It's tomorrow. He's a foreigner. Yeah, that guy must live here. I don't understand. You know, I don't understand how everybody knows about Lucky Formula. I got it. Spy. Everybody's a spy. I mean, a spy is a revolution. That's right. Wait, wait. Bring us two revolutions. Revolution? It means three quarts of champagne. Viva Rosita! Viva! Viva Rosita! You're absolutely right, honey. Yeah, take a smug of it. Hey, what's she saying? She's not. When she loves a man very much, she's got to beat him up. Yeah. Yeah. And she loves you so much, she's going to kill you. Oh, death, where is I sting? Oh, come on, snap me. Come on. Oh, come on, don't be short. Think I will lose my one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, that's uh, very personal. You couldn't say it in public. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's starting again. Tell her I don't believe in marriage. Well, you know the words. You tell her. Yeah, but they have a funny effect when I say them. Maybe I'll get them wrong. What is it? What is it? Me amo. Quiero usted casarse conmigo. Eso dice. Oh, mi vida.
the sober ones in the outfit. Oh, sure, it cures your headache all right. Gives you such a stomachache, you can't feel anything north of your neck. That's the idea. Headache goes down your stomachache, your stomachache goes down to a knee ache, and a knee ache goes down your feet, you're all right. Oh, I see. What's that? Dandruff. What's that? Hey, 
guys who are under arrest. How you can't arrest us? We're American citizens. That makes no difference. Arson in San Rico is punishable by life imprisonment. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you, we'll make a deal with you. You let us go, and we'll fight on your side of the revolution. Revolution? There is no revolution. And what's all the shooting about? Those are fireworks. This is a national holiday of San Rico. Take them to jail. Whose idea was this, anyway? I wish I was back in the Philippines. Friends now hear about this. Throw that whiskey away. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jim. <laughs> Here she goes. These men were seen hurrying from the factory. Shortly afterwards, there was an explosion. Andy, proceed. These men had absolutely no business to be in the factory on a holiday. My company demands that the culprits be prosecuted to the full extent of the law of San Rico. How do you plead? I have advised my clients to plead guilty and throw themselves on the mercy of this court. What happens if we plead not guilty? Then you will be held for trial. But in view of the evidence, you will certainly be convicted. And the penalty will be life imprisonment. Oh, I never lived to serve it. Well, I suppose there's nothing else to do but plead guilty. That's the man. As the American consul in San Rico, I've been requested by the Duplex Dynamite and Gunpowder Manufacturing Corporation to demand the immediate arrest of James Dawson for plotting the blowing up of the powder factory and for grand larceny. Why, this is ridiculous. This young lady has enough on you to hang you. I think you will find it rather difficult to prove any of your charges against me. Do you understand now, Davis, why Dawson was interested in your formula? No, I don't. He knew that by adding nitrate of potash, it would detonate itself without impact. He wanted just enough of it to destroy the record department. Then we didn't blow up the plant. Certainly not. I have an affidavit from Kelly, the night watchman that he saw Dawson follow you boys into the plant, San Rico Day. You mean the day we had the hangover? Yes. Dawson wrecked the plant, not you men. In view of the startling developments, it seems there is nothing I can do but dismiss the charges against you gentlemen. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here before they change their mind. Come on. Are you from Senor? Ah. Senorita Rosita say many times you have promised to marry her and you commit the breaches of promise. Huh? Oh, she's screwy. According to the law, it is a very serious offense. You'll marry the senorita or I'll order your arrest. I never asked her to marry me in her life. I told her I didn't believe in marriage. No. Oh, the big stick. No, no. Do you see? You have broken her heart. You have shattered her soul. She weeps. Ah, uh, that's onions. The senorita says she have witness to prove that six times you have asked her, I love you. Will you marry me? Yeah. And I got witnesses to prove what I did say, too. Well, what did you say? I can remember the exact words. I said, te amo, quiero usted, casarse conmigo. Uh, how can you deny it? Then I walk. Now, wait a minute. Now, what does that uh, mean, what I just said? What does it mean? It means I love you. Will you marry me? That's all I want to know. Espere. You'll marry the senorita or go to jail. All right. I'll marry the senorita right after the murder. What is it? Oh, no. I ought to right in your nose. That's what I ought to do. I'm a... Davey! At last I have found you, you little pepita. Who is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> the Philippines, we know. Woman oh. there. Must be some mistake. You can't do this to us, Papa. Papa. Jimmy, you remember our little Pedro? My Pedro, how you have grown. At last I find you now. I never, never let you go. <laughs> well, it's too bad your wife isn't here to make the party complete. 
My wife? What do you mean? Oh, he ain't got no wife, Miss Leslie. That was a gag. Jimmy and me framed them letters so we wouldn't lose Lucky. Now look what happened to us. <laughs> that must be Bob and Jim. I'll see. Come in, boys. <laughs> Hiya, Bob. Hiya, kid. Hello, Jimmy. You're a Hiya, Lucky. <laughs> Take off your hat in the house. Little Bill's out in the living room playing with some fireworks. Send the kids out there. Yeah, right. come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Hi in here. Take your coat off. I'm gonna. It's sure great to be married, fellas. There's nothing like settling down. I never thought you'd give up powder mixing, Lucky. Oh, I'm so glad he did. It might have influenced little Bill. Just imagine a mother's worry, thinking that her son might grow up to be a powder mixer. Come back, children! <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs>